This is a 1974 uh, version of Travis County. And I just happened to know somebody who was getting rid of this. And so I said, no, no, I have to have a copy of it. But before, when you wanted to find out about your, <laughs> your soils, you had to go to these maps and it was, it was pretty torturesome. And what I'm going to do today is to teach you how to do it online. And it's so much easier. So I'm really excited to share my presentation with you. So I'm going to tell you or how to use this wonderful tool that we have. It's an online tool. Rather than going to the soil survey book, we go to ecosystem dynamics interpretive tool or edit for short. This, these, um, the, the edit is a, it's an online tool that gives you information uh, to help you make decisions about what to plant in your restoration or efforts. And we have two online tools that give similar information. Some of you may be familiar with the Web Soil Survey, which is here on the right-hand side. This, uh, the Web Soil Survey has been around for uh, a long time. It's, it's more complex to use. And I think it's more complex from my perspective anyway, because it's an older version. It's not as user-friendly basically but it does do one thing that edit does not do. It allows you to, um, if you wanna look at an area that's just more uh, than a pinpoint on a, on, a, on a map, then it allows you to actually define an area in which you want to, um, to, to look at the various ecosystem sites. And so, if you, for example, have a 60 acre piece of property, you can outline the boundaries of that 60 acre piece of property and then determine uh, what your um, ecological site descriptions are and be able to pull them up and download them and, and uh, reference them in your process of restoration. Uh, edit on the left is easier to use and that's what we decided to demonstrate and there's the link to how to get to it. So what I'm going to do right now is just go through the different step. First of all, before I go through the different steps, I'm going to talk about um, why we even want to use edit to research a location. As we've said before, it's, it provides you a starting place to research and assess a specific location that you're interested in restoring or being a steward to. And um, you, what you do is you find your location on the edit interpretive map and click ecological site descriptions. And that allows you to see the, um, that PDF that Suzanne brought up and went over at the very beginning when she was talking about the Dogwood Canyon, you can see that ecological site description for the area you're interested in. And they help you decide on your land stewardship practices and make those informed adjustments that we've talked about during your restoration or reconstruction process. Some, some of the information that's available, and Suzanne did go through it a little bit, is the phys physical geography or physiology, physiography of the area. That's some of the climactic features that you may encounter, soil and water features, and the ecological dynamics. And uh, I agree with Suzanne, the ecological dynamics is a very important part of a bit of information that these uh, ecological sites descriptions give to you. So when you click on that link, uh, and all I have to do is type E in my Google search <laughs> page and it come, brings edit up. Um, when you click on that, that, that uh, link that we provided to you, this is the home page, or what's the new term is called landing page. And when you get to the home page, what you need to do and, and by the way, once we get finished going through this series of slides to, to teach you how to use the edit program, I'm gonna go through, we'll do a real live demonstration so you can see, um, see it in live, live format, so to speak. So when you reach that homepage, you want to scroll down 
And you'll see on the left-hand side, something that says ecological site descriptions, and you would be, want to click on that in order to, order to continue on. Here's the landing page for the ecological site descriptions. And on the left-hand side, you'll see these tabs right here. These are all active tabs that you can click on to, to get more information. The general information is just an overview, basically. Next Steps reminds you of what you need to do in order to get, get through this program uh, and then it, uh, further on. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the MLRA map, first of all. MLRA, by the way, stands for Major Land Resource Area. So we're going to the Major Land Resource Area map. This is the next, when you click on MLRA map, this is what you see, the map of the United States. Now you can get to Texas in a, a number of different ways, but we're demonstrating to you here a simple way. The first thing you need to do is to go click on state and then you select Texas. So you'll we'll, uh, basically there's a drop down list and you'll select Texas. And then once you've selected Texas, it becomes highlight, highlighted. So of course you can do this for any state in the United States. Uh, and then you click done. And once you click done, it basically highlights the eco, um, ecological systems for the state of Texas. You can see it, it overflows outside of Texas and that's because the regions are not just limited to the geographic boundaries of the state of Texas. So you see it's highlighted, it's blue. Now, before I go on, I wanna just point something out to you. Because what we're gonna do next is click on the map and scroll into it and find our way to where, what we wanna look at, the area or the location that we wanna look at. If you are at your computer and you wanna find out about your own land that's surrounding you and your computer has a locator on it, then all you have to do is to click find me right here on the right hand side. If you click find me, then the, 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 the map will go directly to where you are. If you have, um, if you have the latitude and longitude of your air, of the place that you want to look, you can click on find point. So there are different ways that you can work you know, work your way through this map to find the location that you're looking for. But we're gonna continue on by now clicking on that blue part, which is Texas. And this is what we'll see on the left-hand side. We'll have a little, we'll, we'll zero in on a little bit on the area that you're interested in. And what you're doing when you click on the blue and you start scrolling in and out, grabbing and zooming, just like you do when you go on to Google Maps, for example, you can use your, um, you can use points of reference like your cities and your roads and major landmarks to find the location that you're interested in. And so eventually you can zero in onto your site. And if you look on the right-hand side here, you'll see that the blues disappeared. So once you get down to the you know, closer up view of what you wanna look at, um, the blue will disappear. Now, what we're looking at here is, this is my, this is my street, basically. I used my house as, a, as an example. So I zeroed in on my house and I clicked where my house is located on Shepherd's Corral. You saw a picture of it in the last presentation. Um, and then when, when you just click anywhere on the map, uh, a little pop-up screen will come up that has that lists the ecological sites of that particular area. So it's got here, there are four different ecological sites that are associated with, with my house, my two acre piece of land. So again, click map at location of interest, and then you have the drop down box with the ecological sites. And if you want to look at a specific ecological site, then you click on it. So I chose to look at the Adobe 29-35PZ because it represents 68% of my ecological site. So I figure that's going to be the most informative. And when I did that, what I saw was 
the actual, um, a quick view of the ecological site description. Now, when you see the, the, the previous and the next right here, these, the previous and next don't mean previous and next in pay, uh, next page, for example, on this particular ecological site description. They mean that that toggles you through the different ecological sites. So if I toggled next, I would go to the Blackland Prairie. And if I toggled next again, I go see the clay loam, et cetera. If there's only one ecological site listed there, then you're not going to have these toggle switches on your quick view version. But this is what will give you the details of the selected ecological site. Now, you want to keep these. I, I think it's great. I have all my ecological sites on my computer. And so the way you can get those stored there is very easily is, is is when you have a series of ecological sites brought up on a pop-up screen, you just click add the briefcase and that will store the sites that you're interested in on the briefcase. Remember the toggle switches, uh, the, switch, the links that you could, you could toggle back and forth in between on the left-hand side. One of them was called briefcase. So when I click this, I've added all four of those ecological site descriptions to my briefcase. So, and then when you want to retrieve your ecological site descriptions, you click on briefcase and that will bring up, it will take you to this briefcase location and you, there your ecological sites will be. And, and you can then when you wanna look at a specific ecological site, you just click on the, the name of the ecological site and Bob's your uncle, you're in there. Okay, so here is, here is what it looks like on the computer. This is the ecological site description. And this has very extensive information, as you can see on the left-hand side, here are all the links that you could click to get more information about your particular site. Remember I mentioned physiographic features, climactic features, water features and soil features, and then the ecological dynamics, et cetera, okay? But if you want to, so you can click uh, back and forth and on it, and you can actually look at this ecological site description all the way through online if you wish. But to download a PDF, you go to the general information tab right up at the top, and then you scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's a PDF icon, and you click on that PDF icon and download the, the site description to your computer. I'll show you how to do it when we go through it live. After you download it, this is what you see. And you may, this may look familiar to you. This is, looks very similar to what Suzanne showed you, uh, only this is a different ecological site, obviously. So after you download it, you've got a PDF of a multiple page report. And this is the report, as we've said before, that will form the basis of your land management strategy. If you have a site that does encompass more than one ecological, you know, different ecological sites, then you should download them all. And then when you get to the site, when you get into your location, you can move around and click on anywhere you want and you will get those little pop-up screens. I'll show you in just a second. So you go to your browser and you uh, put the link in for edit. Like I said, for me, I just have to type E and edit.jornada.nmsu, that's the New Mexico State University uh, that collaborates with the NRCS to bring this to you. And there's your uh, landing page as we, we discussed. And you scroll down, remember we scroll down and then you would wanna click on ecological site descriptions. You can click here and look at everything you want to there, but we're just gonna to go today to the ecological site descriptions. Uh, 
All right, here's the page for ecological site descriptions with the little links as I talked about over here on the left hand side. So in order to see the map, you have to click on MLRA map. And there you have it, the map comes up. Now, remember we talked about going and looking at the state, but I also wanted to show you what Find Me does. So if I click on Find Me, I believe, Let's see if it found me. Yeah, it did find me. Here's Shepherd's Corral right here. So if, if, if you're at the location that you want to look at the, the ecological sites for, you just click on Find Me. It makes it very simple. And find point, as I said, you need to be able to enter the latitude and the longitude and then click Go. But we're going to go back to, um, let me see if it's going to let me go. Oh, that's not really what I wanted to do. We'll go back this way. So we're going to go back and click on MLRA map. And we're going to go this, the slow way this time. We're going to say, oh, I want to see the state of Texas. Not Tennessee, Texas. And then see over here, you click on done. And what it does is it highlights Texas and, and all the eco ecological uh, sites that spread out from Texas. So I double click on my, I, I double click on my, well, okay. This gives you the major land resource areas individually. So here's cross timbers, for example. You can actually, uh, here's north, uh, central prairies, which here's the north, northern Rio Grande Plain. Uh, I imagine that Southern High Plains, I think Edwards Plateau is somewhere around here. Anyway, you can click around and just see all the different major land, uh, uh, major land resource areas, or you can just double click on it and keep on double clicking on it until you get back in. Scroll in. Makes you dizzy, doesn't it? So here's Stephenville. Oh, I know where Stephenville. That, that's west of where we want to go. So I'm looking for Cedar Hill. Hmm, of course it can, I know. So Dallas, I know it's below Dallas and in between Dallas and Moxahatchee. So I'm gonna scroll in a little bit more to see if I can find it. Here's Cedar Hill right here. So I center it so that I don't lose it as I scroll in. Now this could be rather disconcerting to see, but believe me, it gets better. You just keep stro scrolling in and then you see, <laughs> then it gets even worse. No, I'm just kidding. So here's Cedar Hill right here. We haven't lost it because I put it in the middle of the map so I wouldn't lose it. Um, and then here's uh, the Farm to Market Road 11, uh, 1382, which is where Dogwood Canyon is. So I'm getting closer. Mm -hmm. Scrolling in, I think I've passed it. Nope, I haven't, because this is Walmart. We know, we know it's not near Walmart. So this could be a, a kind of a pain, but it also can be maybe the only way you'll be able to do it, I don't know. But um, hold on. I know it's around here somewhere, have I passed over it? Mm -hmm. oh, you haven't gone far enough. Thank you. Oh yes, here it is right here. And I recognize this because I took level three right here. This is, the, this is the Audubon Center right here. Dogwood Canyon Audubon Center. This is that circle that goes around in the front. And then here is the parking lot area and lots of trails that go around. So you'll see this is where we are. So what uh, I did in order to get through ecological site descriptions for Dogwood Canyon was I, I clicked on this. And basically you can see that this is, as Suzanne said, this is the Southern clay loam where 
a lot of the soil has basically washed down off of this. I think the 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 uh, it's not really a cliff, but the it's you know the top of the canyon is up behind Dogwood Canyon, and a lot of the soil has eroded down to this area, and you'll see that it's base basically got a lot of southern clay loams out. So okay, southern clay loam is what you have in your class materials folder, and you also have southern blackland. Now, I want this, these ecological sites. Remember, how do you do that? You click on your add to briefcase. Okay. And let's go see if it's in there. I actually happened to populate it with uh, all of the ecological site descriptions that are in that area. Um, and so I already had the southern clay loam and the southern blackland there. Let me just show you how. Oh. Really? Never mind. Okay. I don't know why it won't take me back to where I was on the map. But it doesn't. So I and I don't really want to go through the whole process of coming up and finding the Dogwood Canyon again. So what we're gonna do is push forward and click on Southern Clay Loam. Remember that was the one that was the There we go. Takes a while to come up. That's the one that was the most predominant description of the Dogwood Canyon. And here is what we talked about earlier. For Southern Clay Loam, we have all this information, the physiographic features, the climactic features, water features, etc. Uh, and then um, for you to download the PDF, you scroll all the way down to the very bottom. I don't know why they make this so hard, but you get down to the bottom and you and you have you can click on this PDF and download the full description. But before we do that, I want to click around here. Just do a little bit of clicking. Physiographic features. It tells you about the slopes of your area and the kinds of and the kinds of soils that you're gonna find if you click on soil features. And then the water features that are there, not influenced by water from wetlands or streams. That's interesting because there is, it's got a riparian area basically. So I don't know why it doesn't uh, elaborate on that. I will say that uh, when, we, when the committee was test, testing this out, this system out, we went, uh, Dee Dee Wright and I went to Corpus Christi and we were look, trying to, because her daughter lives there and um, there wasn't any information about that, uh, about anything there. It was just basically we couldn't find anything. So there may be some areas that don't necessarily have the information that you're interested in. I hope not, but I, uh, I'm not guaranteeing anything. So the ecological dynamics, I think, is very interesting. I know Suzanne talked about the natural vegetation that would have been found, the what we call the reference plant communities that would have been found for a particular area and for this particular um, eco uh, ecological uh, site. But what happens, and it talks about what uh, impacts have, have been, uh, what what how the area has been impacted by humans and what the current state it is, and then uh, current management. So if you get down here, and don't be turned off by this diagram, and it is, it's, it's, uh, it's not clear, you can't see it very well here, but uh, when you get it on your PDF, you should be able to see it just fine. But this is the, the uh, ecosystem dynamics that she was talking about, and, um, it's very interesting uh, thing to look at because here's your um, high successional uh, state for, for this particular location, a prairie state. And then uh, th this basically will give you the directions that, that the um, impacts, like let's say for example, uh, what, is, what happens to this tall grass prairie is that over time the woody encroachment takes place 
and uh, and it might and might evolve to a midgrass prairie community where you have see a decrease in the tall grasses and an increase in the midgrasses and a slight increase in the woody coverage. So the woody woody canopy cover cover would go from from 10% to 10 to 35% in this example. So if you want to get this mid-grade, if, if your site has degraded down to the mid-grass prairie community and you wanted to bring it back up to the, high, the higher successional level, then it gives you strategies on how to do that. And it also talks about what causes these transitions. So if you look at one prairie state, 1.1 tall grass prairie, 1.1a, which is this little arrow going from a tall grass prairie to mid grass prairie, is caused by improper grazing management, no brush management, and no fire. So, to get back from the mid grass prairie community, you would follow this pathway, the 1.2a, and that would mean you introduce proper grazing management or brush and brush management, and perhaps some prescribed burning for that area to get it back to this particular state. So it's the dynamics of the different states. It's, landscapes are not static. Plant communities are not static. They're continuously changing. So uh, this gives you an idea of what you might, uh, the high successional state looks like and what might cause it to go into a different successional state and how to get it to the successional state that you wish it to be in. Um, so these other arrows talk about how really basically more encroachment uh, of woody species. So you'll see 35 to 50% woody can canopy cover here. So it's turning into a shrubland right here, mixed and then over time, if more woodies move in, you've got greater than 50% wood canopy cover here or cover. And then a dense woodland eventually, if you let your woodies move in over time, you're gonna have uh, basically a woodland community. And then this part right here addresses the, the fact that uh, when it says converted land state, we're talking about things that humans have done to it uh, and, and, go, and, and it would be uh, improper grazing management, no, graze, no brush, brush management and idle land, et cetera. So, you just have to look at these different boxes to see the state of the plant community, the reference plant community that you're looking at, and then look at the descriptions of the transitions from one uh, state to another. And then here are your techniques, uh, your management techniques that you might want to use to move from one state or another. And the really cool thing about this is it actually gives you photographs of what the state's look like. So this is a 1.1 tall grass prairie, which is what we start out with right here. The, the, the climax plant community or the high succession plant community. And then it'll show you a picture of what it turns into, mid grass with a little bit more encroachment of the woody plants. And so forth. These illustrate the different pathways that we just talked about and how to get from one to another, et cetera. It's very interesting and it's very, you can see it's very long. <laughs> so you can uh, use this, you, it, it's really helpful to go just take a look at this and, and scroll through it to see, um, to learn about your, your ecological area. What else do I, I think that's all I wanna talk about